Hey, Ginger, this is Adam Davis. How are you? I'm good. David, this is Adam Davis. <laughs> hey, David, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks, brother. Oh, well. Thanks as well. Isn't that cool? I'm I'm so glad you're both on here. I uh, I'm not sure how glad I'm going to be because David has known me since childhood, so I'm afraid he might say something again. You know that it's going to come back and bite me. But I'm gonna. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I, every time I talk to, to Ginger Adam, I have to tell her. You know, I have to thank her because she introduced me to my soulmate, my wife, and without Ginger. Being at the skating rink when she was fourteen <laughs> on, a youth, on a youth, uh, uh, you know, outing, then I never would have met my wife. And we will be celebrating thirty-one years. Wow! Wow! And that's, three, that's and three awesome. beautiful daughters. But I give Ginger all. I mean, well, the good Lord, but you know, yeah. the good okay. Lord placed Ginger there that day to meet my friend, and then that's how it kind of happened. Wow, that is, what a story. 14 years old on a youth outing. Those youth outings were special, man, I, I tell you. Uh, yeah. Me and my wife and have been married 18 years this year, and we've got years. three kids. So, yeah, yeah uh, we're very thankful. Very thankful. You, got, you, you're, you, you are blessed, certainly. I am, and, and you as well, like I said. I mean, my daughters, I've got three daughters, and, uh, you know, I thank the Lord every day, you know, for my daughters and my wife. And, you know, I just, I'm extremely blessed. And yet he didn't name one of them after me. He had three girls. Not any of them have the name Ginger or my name as the middle name. <laughs> I know, but each girl knows the story. Because of course, <laughs> how, how did y'all meet? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you the story. And every one of them knows Aunt Ginger. <laughs> That's right. Isn't that good? Well, his That's wife, good. his wife was the very first friend I ever made. I was three years old. And we lived out in the country and no one else, there was no other kids in our, in our whole like highway except her. And thankfully it was a girl and we were just best friends and stayed that way through graduating high school and afterwards. And I'm <laughs> going to go see their daughter get married June 1st. So, um, oh, wow. and, uh, I guess, uh, Ginger, you're, you said you were in Detroit. And, yeah. I'm from uh, Texas. You're out in Dallas. Yeah, I'm 50 miles east of Dallas in a little okay. small town called Farmersville. Where are you at, Adam? I'm in southeast Alabama in a town called Dothan, Alabama. Okay. okay. Well, so yeah. I'm so excited. He, I've, not, I thought this is such a cool ministry, and I, I'm sure there is other ministries out there, but I had not seen one dedicated strictly to law enforcement like this, and especially with the climate that we have more than ever i think the support for law enforcement needs to be out there especially from the church and yeah. um you know doing a devotional strictly to law enforcement i thought was amazing and that's the reason i invited david on the call because you know 28 years with farmers branch police department and not necessarily in a great area of farmers branch um you know he he has a lot of experience um, on the beat doing doing the hard thing, and I thought it would be cool to hear like his thoughts on it too. So, like Adam, like how did you kind of divert your attention into you know doing devotionals and things to support law enforcement? Uh, you know, I get that a lot. How do you go from being a cop to uh, being a, a full time writer, <laughs> uh, having a business? Yeah. How does that happen? Retirement. And, uh, <laughs> so it was really birthed out of a out of a place of need um, for me. Uh, I I had dealt with things uh, on on the job, um, just emotionally, you know, uh, and letting it build up. And and I'm saying this you know, kind of Monday morning quarterback in it now. I didn't realize what was going on at the time, but I was letting all this stuff kind of build layer after layer after layer on me. And it was affecting me as a husband, as a father, uh, as a believer, uh, shook me to my core as a believer. And at the end of the day, what was left was a, a solid relationship with Jesus Christ. And that was all I had to hang on to. And uh, so that, you know, a, a great friend of mine who's also a pastor in East Alabama, uh, up around the Adobalaka, uh, Columbus, Georgia area, uh, said he taught me a lesson and he's a former cop, was a former street cop up from the Auburn area. He said, 
give out of your place of need. And it creates, uh, you know, kind of an atmosphere for breakthrough. And uh, I was sitting down one night praying, uh, actually complaining to God about the, the <laughs> kind of the environment around law enforcement. And I said, you know, uh, I'm really sick of this. Who's going to stand up and say something good? Who's going to stand up and speak encouragement and speak life and speak your word into this profession, into the lives of these men and women? And he said, well, do something about it instead of complaining. And um, that's where my first book came. And then that just was kind of a step of obedience. And Behind the Badge is a, is a result of that step of obedience. And now I'm working on books four, five, and six and a oh, contract man. for seven. So, and it's all for law enforcement military right now. So that's, that is my, that is my focus. Um, but it was really out of, out of a place of my own struggle. And I said, you know, there's got to be more people dealing with stuff like this. And the more I started talking about it, the more people started calling me and messaging me and emailing me and saying, thank you so much. I needed that, <laughs> you know, but we're not supposed to talk about stuff. You know, we're supposed to uh, muscle up and we're supposed to handle our business and show no sign of weakness. But um, I think arming ourselves with the faith uh, in, in Christ and walking in the truth of his word uh, strengthens us exponentially. And uh, yeah. empowers us to do the job and to do it well, and, and to really have a um, an impact on our communities beyond what we could ever do just by being an average, everyday, if there's such a thing, ordinary law enforcement officer. Because when you're armed with the spirit, you could you could change the world. Absolutely, and it's a great ministry. And like I said, you know, and, and I can relate. You know, and and bottling everything from being a street cop and then getting assigned to crimes against children and working those, you know, the most horrific crimes you can think and not being able to come home and having, you know, three daughters and talk to my wife and all you've got is your buddies and you couldn't decompress. Right. And without, you know, how, you know, we would get ready for patrol. You wear your body armor, you get, you know, everything that protects you, but without putting on the armor of God, I don't see how you could do it. And, you know, I was like you, I kind of started questioning, you know, dear Lord, why are all these bad things happening? And, you know, it shakes you to your core. But, you know, one of my favorite verses is Romans 8, 31. If God is with you, who can be against you? That's right. And, you know, you got to read the word and I would read the word every day before shift. And without that, I felt naked like I didn't have my body armor on. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you, um, I I learned quickly that if we want to uh, let me rephrase that, if we are going to walk in the power of. Uh, of his spirit, the power of his word. It only comes through relationship and relationship only comes through knowing him and we can only know him by spending time of that word. And so behind the badge, I didn't write it to be the sole uh, spiritual meal, if you will. It's meant to start them on their daily journey and it's created to kind of provoke them to go and get deeper in the word and, and cause them, you know, cause people to think and meditate on his word and it's just the start of the process and kind of supplement whatever else they got going on. But it's written from the heart of a man who wore a uniform and worked the streets, was an investigator, worked sex crime, was a hostage negotiator. I did all the stuff in a short time frame, but I did it. And um, I, I just, you know, I, I believe in the power of God's word and the impact it can have on a life. Now, David, I'm curious if, uh, David, I'm curious if, you know, he's, he just retired 28 years with with the police department, so yeah. I, I that's one of the reasons I wanted his take on it. Um, you know, to have a devotional like this, where something where you can get just a quick word of encouragement to read before your day. You know, um, is that something you, that you would have probably kind of grabbed onto while you were uh, like on the on the police force? Is this something you think is uh, serving a great need in, in your fellow brothers in the police department? You know, and, you know, and there you had your buddies and stuff, you know, they were Christians and, you know, I always carried, you know, I had a, a Bible in my car and then I carried a little Gideon uh, New Testament Bible in my patrol bag. And, you know, I would use that. And if I would have had something like Adam, you know, just wrote because every police officer on the force 
you know, if you have that type of resource of, you know, somebody like Adam that has walked in our shoes and has put it in a daily devotional, that would have been a godsend. And there's so many police officers out there because of all everything you face. I mean, especially in today's world where when I started, you were respected. And then Mm -hmm. as I got ready to retire, we couldn't even go out to eat because, you know, you didn't know if they were going to do something to your food and, you know, the, you know, all the hateful remarks. And, but if you had something like what, you know, you put out at them, I mean, that's a godsend and that would help so many, you know, men and women on the force and in the military as well. Yeah. Yeah, That environment Uh, changed really. You were right. I mean, I, the people that used to be a thing were, um, as a kid, you know, you could al- you could always trust a cop, you know, like you could always tell a cop if something was wrong and, and you just respected them when you went out. But with the climate now, it is so, it's terrifying. And David had one of, during that horrible Dallas police shooting, lost one of his comrades, you know, and uh, so, you know, something like this, I mean, at a time where there's great need, I mean, if you have that if you have that behind your badge, you know, behind the badge in your pocket, you know, it'd be great to give to a guy that's, you know, having a hard time with that and say, you know what, people who don't know the Lord that are in law enforcement say, you know what, it may not encourage you, but man, it sure does for me. And they would take it from a fellow officer, I would think, more than they would someone from a church. Well, you know, they'll take it from a fellow officer, uh, but it's also a tremendous resource for for pastors, ministry leaders, uh, if they want to have a law enforcement appreciation day and, you know, give them away as gifts to, uh, to the law enforcement officers. But I've, I've had that, you know, I've done that with uh, my previous book. And of course we travel, I travel quite a bit or have been lately. Uh, and, and I always try to take a couple of extra with me. So if I, you know, I'm in the gas station or whatever I'm doing, if I come across a, a police officer, I can just say, Hey, it just, give this to you, you know, I always try to keep a couple with me. And, uh, but you know, they, and this, this devotion, my very first was paper bag. And this one is uh, imitation leather. It smells like leather. It's beautifully designed. Uh, my publisher did, they did a phenomenal job with this book. The, the pictures and the graphics just do not do it justice. And, uh, just very proud of how, how the design turned out. It, it perfect. It, it'll fit in the, you know, most, most of them, uh, most all law enforcement officers now wear the pants with the, uh, cargo pockets on them. And this yeah. book will fit right in the cargo pocket. Uh, if you want to keep it on you, uh, when you're working, it'll go in your bag. It's durable. And uh, it'll last, and so yes. But more importantly, is the content that's in it. Uh, probably two of my favorite sections are November and December. Uh, the the two months of November, December. November is the blessings over law enforcement. And, uh, December is the um, declarations over law enforcement, speaking life. And I believe in the power of the word. The word of God can change. Uh, it can change our country if we get back to seeking relationship and Amen. get back to the basics. I'm I'm curious, David, like, um, you know, he had a very interesting, like, experience because he's bilingual. He had a a really tough, um, highly Latino gang area kind of situation where he was. Um, Do you think people like that you, you know, have in law enforcement, like if if someone were to that were, say, for people like me or in the church that want to support law enforcement, how, how, like, receptive do you think? like people that you were encountering would be to, you know, someone giving this to them to just bless a police officer, just take some to a police station and say, you know, I, I just want to bless your officers. Can you pass these out kind of thing? I mean, what do you, what do you think the reception would be if they are not a believer and they're, you know, but they're going out on the beat every day, risking their lives kind of thing? I, I think it would be, they, they would take it very, very well, even if they're not a Christian, maybe, you know, it's all about planting the seed. And, and I worked with several officers that were not Christian. And, you know, and maybe by them getting this devotional, you know, and if it's coming from, you know, uh, another law enforcement officer, one of your brothers or sisters, and they open that book, maybe, you know, you just planted a seed for them to trip around and, you know, you know, turn their life over to Christ. Well, in the, 
it's not preachy, so it's not going to be, yeah. you know, uh, it's it's not a. I, I remember how how unreceptive I would have been to something like that, and and probably still am. Most people are not very receptive to that type of delivery, and so I wanted to write it in a way that's relational. Like we're I think if we're sitting down at a restaurant or or, or on a porch and a couple of chairs and or drinking coffee, we're just hanging out and we're talking about the word. I wanted to be conversational and relational and um, something that really would would last uh, a lifetime. I mean, so yeah. this book, I want this book to be around long after my time here has ended and I want it to have an impact long beyond my life. And um, so I, and I believe it will. And now yeah. we need a copy in Espanol, I believe. Or, uh, right, David? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what we'll say again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'd encourage you to reach out to my, my good friends at Broad Street who have done this book and tell them, uh, hey, we need a copy in, in Espanol. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love how he says it. My son says, Espanol. Espanol? <laughs> well, I'm from Alabama, so I struggle to say anything. My, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> Texas, everything we say, y'all, and think, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way we roll. You know, what's yeah, funny right. is I'm I'm from the south, and I feel like like the outcast in this conversation. I hear thick accents everywhere except from me. <laughs> well, you know, I don't you, have you ask, you ask uh, Ginger, you know, she'll say, "Hey, I want a soda." Well, in Texas, and I'm sure it's like I that say Alabama, pop. Yep, you say. Hey, you want a Coke? Yeah, I want a Dr. That's Coke. Right. <laughs> see, I don't know. See, Ginger's not soda. It's Coke. No, we it's call it pop. <laughs> we call it pop. And, pop. and Ginger, I've never heard. I've never been told that I have a deep Southern accent. Uh, that's because you're around other Southerners. <laughs> <laughs> He ought, to, he ought to hear Cindy talk, shouldn't he, Ginger? Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. His his Cindy wife is very thick. Mm -hmm. Texan accent I've ever heard in my life. And it's, and it's got this kind of little girl voice to it, so it's adorable. You think she's younger than she is over the phone. And she's tiny, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mess with her, though, either. I think she's scarier than a cop. I mean, <laughs> she's the oh, one that yeah. runs the she's beat over at that house. You know what's what's great is um, hearing Adam talk about how how hard it is. I guess I take it for granted that my friend David has always been gracious and kind and and fun loving and always been the same David that you know yeah. is a great husband to my best friend and you know great you know dad to their kids and it, and it just his his uh, mentality his demeanor it never changed it was always the same and that's got to be tough for him to have accomplished with knowing the, what he really dealt with because in your mind you're going yeah I'm so proud he's a cop you know he's doing so good but in in the back of your mind you're not realizing exactly what he's doing every day that he's praying I make it through my shift you know yep. Yep. And, and even when you're out in public with your family you know, so many, so many law enforcement officers have families, they have spouses, they have children, and, yeah. and uh, you know, society. And and, and and let me rephrase that: there's certain certain parts of certain media and certain agendas that have painted law enforcement as a whole as just a bunch of public, you know, figures that that that, that don't have emotions or lives, and they don't matter. And uh, you know, we just see them in the media as well, there's just another dead cop or there's something else that happened or some cop screwed up or whatever it yeah. is. And, you know, we forget that these are men and women that they have families, they have children that they care for. And so when they go out to eat, you know, or, or go out and try to enjoy life, it's always something, they're always something in the back of their mind. And they're always looking, they're always working, they're never off duty. Yeah. Um, and so behind the badge reinforces uh, strength, uh, find, understanding that we can't, cannot do this on our own. It's impossible to do it on, you will fall and crumble under the pressure, under the stress, yep. if you try to do it on your own. And so, um, you know, I, I was, listen, I did not write this book because I was a, a saintly police officer. I didn't write it because I, 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 I feel like I'm pristine, clean, or, or perfect. I was, I was bad. There, I was a drinking, cussing a roughneck and uh yeah. i like to think i was pretty good at my job <laughs> and uh because i got to do a lot and have a lot of fun but at the end of the day 
I I sinned against the I sinned against God, and I almost lost my family. And I I never shy away from saying, He saved me. He set me free, and it is because He set me free that I can come and tell this message. Um, and that it doesn't matter where you're at or how bad things are, man. He could He could radically change your life and uh, cause you to thrive instead of just survive. And, uh, it goes for your marriage too. <laughs> it goes yeah. for your marriage too. So uh, I'm so thankful, man. I'm so thankful, and I hope you can tell it in the way I talk. But I, oh, I I'm gonna backflip into the pearly gates. I'm so happy with what he's done for me. Because I sure can't backflip now. Oh, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I can't either. <laughs> I was gonna say I want I want to see David back backflip. I don't think he can either. Yeah, you might see a half a backflip, and that'd be it. And then I'd be <laughs> to go to the orthopedic surgeon. David, you know, we, David, one of the things that you know, there's there's kind of a people talk about a lot is um, how how much law enforcement uh, suicides. Uh, it, it's a it's an epidemic. I mean, it, and nobody, yeah. there's a few, there's a few organizations and a few people doing some wonderful things. Uh, I don't know if I can say the name of the organization, but you can look them up. Uh, but um, they, they're doing great things, trying, trying to bring awareness to this stuff. And uh, more law enforcement officers die by taking their own lives exactly. every year than people that are, than law enforcement officers that are violently killed and murdered in the line of duty. And nobody's talking about it. But, you know, because we want we want to deny the effects of the, the presence of PTSD in law enforcement. I know that it, I know that it exists in the military. I know it exists in other first responders, but it, we are we have absolutely got to bring awareness to it now because it's not in five or 10 years. Um, it's going to be I mean, it's already a real problem. It's going yeah, to be bad every, every day. I mean, one of the officers I worked with, you know, went through a divorce, lost his family and. I mean, he saw no other way out, and none of us knew because he put on the front at work. Like you said, any yeah. sign of emotion is a sign of weakness, and you're taught that from day one in the police right. academy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one day, you know, we're trying to reach him and reach him, and, of course, you know, he's not answering. Go to the apartment, and he took his own life with his own service weapon. Jeez. And we had, you know, and we kind of felt his failures because we didn't see it because at work he was like, hey, you know, I'm good. And we didn't, we just didn't see it, but it was all, you know, just a facade he was putting on for all of us at work because you can't show weakness. No, you know, that, no. That's what they teach you from day one because they'll devour you. And I mean, it's just, and you're exactly right. That is an epidemic. Every day there are police officers taking their own life because they don't know how to deal with the stress. I never uh, thought so about me. that. Like Pete, you were saying, saying PTSD. I never thought about that with law enforcement because you always kind of yeah. assimilate that with the military. But for a lot of military, they do a tour and they might have two, three, four years of that experience and then they come home. And right. but with law enforcement, like for David, 28 years, you know, 40 hours a week or whatever his, his hours were, you know, like that. 28 years every day I go to work that that kind of PTSD has got to be a lot harder to fight you know when it's oh, well, it, long term it's uh, it, it's, uh, it's not acute you know you, yeah. you, don't, you don't see the you know the, it, it's a chronic 24 hour right. day multi angle multi threat zero defect profession you've got threats from multiple angles and I say that I say you got it from media because they can yeah. destroy you if you make one mistake because it's a zero defect profession. You could make zero yeah. mistakes. Yeah. They'll destroy you. Uh, society will destroy you. Social media will destroy you. And then you get down to, okay, well, how does that affect me when I go home and take care of my family? Do I lose my family? And then we haven't even got to the line of duty dangers on the street. Yeah. Being assaulted or murdered or killed in a vehicle accident. Uh, the average life expectancy of a law enforcement officer after retirement, I think, used to be it used to be like five years. Yeah. And uh, you know, fifty-five years old was the was the kind of the magic number. And you know, uh, it's it's so many so many men and women that have battled with PTSD and that have found healing because there is healing that have found healing leaned on their faith. 
Yeah. Uh, they had a, they had something they did. There was a hobby. They built relationships, but so many have that thread, that fiber of faith. And that faith in Christ will bring healing. It gave me tremendous freedom and uh, changed everything. And, you know, for me in, in every way. And I think that it's important to show that on a practical level, uh, faith in Christ can help us uh, deal with the stress, the trauma, the, the nightmares, the, the issues we're dealing with when we learn that uh, he, he has asked, he has commanded us to turn our burdens over to him and, and understand that strength is in numbers and that it's not, it's not a, you know, it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to talk about it, but it's also okay to turn it over to the master and let him walk you through the storm. Absolutely. I see. I see like a Bible study situation. I think churches should host like community Bible studies that are strictly for law enforcement. So, so guys can come together arm in arm, you know, because if they talk to a guy who's already in law enforcement, they can let their guard down in front of them. Like they can't in front of a church or in front of maybe a pastor, but they could like, as, as like a support group, they could say, okay, Here's today's, you know, devotion from behind the badge. Like, what did this mean to you guys? This is how, this is what it meant to me because this is what I'm going through. And, ha- you know, like, I, I think Bible studies and outreaches like that need to happen because we got to change the climate again. We got to change it back to, you know, just now, you know, firemen. Of course, I, I say people don't like cops until they have a crime committed against them and then they love them, you know, you know, then, then they're, you, then they're like, yeah. you know, where's, where's the men in blue. I, I you know, we got to get them out here. Um, they're all, they're all great to call when their neighbors, you know, stereo is too loud or, you know, they, they, yeah. they need something like that. But any other time it is, it's, and I, I, my son, I was, he was raised to, you know, respect law enforcement, military, Everybody in a uniform, and to this day, he shakes guys' hands if he sees a police officer, military, and he tells them, "Thank you for serving." Every time, and 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 to me, I just you know, as you guys were talking, I take that for granted. I think that everybody instills that in their kid that that's somebody who helps our community and all that, and. Um, you know, other than seeing my kids seeing them at the high school for the drug programs and stuff like that, I think that scared them more, you know, like it kind of more detached themselves from the police when they, they were like, okay, so if it has something to do with drugs, I guess I got to call the police. But, you know, like they, I think we got to, we, as a church, as a church body, I don't mean just a building. I mean, as a as believers, we need to, I mean, I'm already ready to buy some devotionals and, and, and donate them to some people. I, I want to know some police officers that could use this. I'm, I'm serious. I, I, I want to start doing something like that. It inspired something in me that I just didn't see this need was out there. And I know there's a million other people who feel the same way I do. Have you have you read some of the devotions, Ginger? That I yes, sent you? sir, I sure did. And, yep, he sent he sent it to me, and um, I I think it's incredible because just hearing you guys talk about what it's like for you guys to have a day, and there's probably some days where you might get called in because you have to come in and you did, weren't expecting it that you can grab that, and especially if you can put it in your cargo pants, you can just pull it out and go, okay, I really need to hear something right now, and and you know, I'm sure you did a lot of prayers like "Protect me, Lord," yeah. and that's all you could say. You know, <laughs> David, do you know? Uh, have you ever heard of uh, Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman? Uh, no. Yes, yes. Author of "On Combat, On Killing, Bulletproof Mind." Yes, I I was a hostage negotiator. We went to the Con Conference in yeah. San Antonio, and he was one of our speakers. One of the best speakers I've ever heard. He. Uh, he actually endorsed this book. He said, I believe this to be the very best resource currently available for all first responders and military. God's yeah. word a- applied and amplified. Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grayson retired. Um, yeah, it, uh, just he, he got on, you know, when I sent it to him and asked him to consider reviewing it, man, he was all over it and uh, yeah. just been so gracious. And um, I, I am, I am thrilled uh I went to Atlanta last night. I told you, Ginger, you saw the, yeah. you saw the picture mm-hmm. where I was at. I, 
uh, studio and yeah. they were just raving about how beautiful the design was. It, <laughs> yeah. it is. It looks like it looks like a miniature Bible. Like oh, yes, as far I saw, as the, I saw the cover. It online. I mean, it's a very nice book. But like it's the, very very you know, police right? looking. You know, I mean, it looks like yeah. a, a, it looks cool. Like a dude wouldn't be ashamed if somebody caught him with it. You yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, you can wear that in your five eleven pants and your car oh. pocket and have it with you at all times. And and now David, you you can you can just tell them they they need to do the the book in Spanish, and then I'll just take my cut of whatever you get paid. So and, there you go. Yeah, I got kids in college, I man. I don't know. I just to see if anybody will uh, if, if we can get some momentum behind this thing. This is this is more than this is more than just a book. Okay, this is a movement. This is a this is a my heart is to have a profound, eternal impact on an entire culture, and I want to see a major shift. Uh, I, you know, there's zero room for for errors in law enforcement. We get that, but I'm ready to see the number of suicides at zero. People say that's you know crazy to think like that. I want to see it zero. I want to see divorces reduced, you know, to to nothing. And and I I just believe that if we can. If we can get back to the basics and and get rid of all the cotton candy theology and get back to the basics of yep. seek an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Seek that relationship, seek him, and all the other stuff will come to you. Absolutely. If you just be obedient and follow him. And uh, maybe that's just a, a simple theology, but Jesus always taught in stories for a reason. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, parable, I think that, I think this time to get back to the basics and we'll see the power restored in the church. And when we see the power restored in the church, we'll begin to see a, a wake up in America. And, uh, that'll affect not just the law enforcement families, but it'll affect all of America. And, uh, I believe the power of God can move in ways that will radically change our country's destiny. You know, I, I have a radical idea. I think men should read these devotionals with their wives if they have well, a I'm wife. I'm working on one for that. It'll come out in I, man, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting behind the ideas. I'm not getting ahead of them. <laughs> I, I got to get there beforehand when the royalty check comes in. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have two right. girls in college. You guys aren't listening. I'm um, just kidding. Uh, they really <laughs> are, though. Uh, but, you know, David, like, you know, I... I guess I never thought about it because now his wife can put on a really good tough exterior and she looks, she looks fragile and sweet and adorable. And she is, but I think she can handle everything like an armored tank. And, yeah. and I, and I think, you know, there are times where I'm like, you know, okay, but are you okay? And, but I think that wives, because their husbands have to put on this tough exterior every time they go to work. I think the wives do too. I think they're, they don't want to, you know, to bring a lot of things to their husband because he's got so much, he's putting on so much every day he walks out. You know, I think for them to do this together and, and share that together and start being vulnerable with each other. Cause it's a safe place for him to be vulnerable with his wife. Nobody, you know, nobody will know it just his wife. I mean, they, but I have a feeling it's hard. Is it, is it hard, David, even, I mean, even with somebody awesome as Cindy, I get it, but is it hard at times to be vulnerable with your wife, even when you've got so much that you're, that you faced at work that day? It, yes, it's extremely hard. And I mean, you know, you, you want to be the, the, the strong one in the relationship, but it, it's hard. And a lot of times, you know, I would come home and, you know, and Adam can, can, to this after you had a horrible day and then you know you just wanted to sit in the chair and you know just watch mindless television and you didn't mm -hmm. I mean you were like a vegetable you wouldn't talk to your kids mm -hmm. you know you would talk to your wife and it was difficult on her because you kind of shut down and uh, you know that that was a hard situation and I remember her telling me she goes you don't know what I go through when I was on patrol and then I would get home you know midnight whatever she goes i wouldn't go to sleep until i heard the velcro from your vest come apart she goes i would fall asleep because i knew you were home safe yeah you and know. yeah there's there's uh the the devotional working on is a 90-day devotion of course i don't want to talk about it it's not ready and 
it won't release until January, but it is it's very unique in the format and it addresses things just like that. Uh, communication, trust, and uh, all the all the different areas. And, but uh, Co- uh, Colonel Grossman and I are working on that together. Um, and kind of, it's going to be a, uh, it's a well, well, much needed resource. And, but, you know, you think about it when a uh, law enforcement officer comes home from duty, uh, how, how does it affect you when you go home to see your family after you, you've dealt with all the things that you deal with in a, in a tour of duty during the day and yeah. where you've seen dead bodies or, uh, you know, your foot pursuits or fights or whatever it is. I mean, I just name them off and you go home and, um, you, you just want to sit there and be quiet. I mean, you just, you need to, you, you want to try to decompress your exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, that spouse is on the other end saying, well, I've, I've done my part today too. Yeah. You, know, you can't just come home and shut down. You know, we're a team. And so that's what this this book is really all about is um, is reinforcing the fact that you're you are a team, learning to lean on each other, and uh, really bulletproof that relationship and prepare for the challenging times. But uh, I kind of walk through uh, those scenarios, and uh, I, I really can't wait to talk more about it. I wish I could now, but. Uh, that is that is going to be a, a great one. And look for that in January. I think yeah, you've started a spark for several different. Like as you talk, I can hear like, oh, but that's that's me. I, I have way too many, you know, creative things. I'm like, oh, he could do this, and then the church could do this. I mean, they're really it, but because in the I I only have that many ideas because it's such a void. There's such a vacuum left there, you know, where there is no support. For even yeah. law enforcement or military, you know, people might throw you a parade, you know, on whatever day. But, you know, or they might do like a <clears throat> maybe a police officer appreciation day or law for or military or have you stand up and everybody applaud. I've seen that a million times and that's yeah. great. But they're used to a, they're used to somebody eventually thanking them in some way or going to a pageant. But they they what they really need is this the stuff that gets underneath your armor, you know, that is truly something that will protect them. Um, regardless if they, if they don't make it home that day, it protects them for eternity. That relationship is what they need, not only for that day on the line of duty, but in, in the line of, if they're, if they don't come home and they go home somewhere else, you know, if they go home to Jesus, they, they have to have that relationship and, um, it's a legacy for them to leave behind for their kids. I think it's good for the sons of guys that are in, in law enforcement to see that tough side that they can have that. But then when they're at home with their family, they can say, but you know, dad needs Jesus too, you know, and there can be a vulnerability even with the kids and they, that kid, cause you don't want a son to just see a tough exterior. You want him to see that vulnerable side that that's loving and, and carries out the, Carries out the, the the message of the Savior. I'm so excited about all this, and I can't I I can't air this entire interview, but I will put the entire interview up on our website as well as on YouTube, and then you guys share it. And Adam, I want to I'm not joking. Like I don't know if you buy the books buy the books in bulk, um, but otherwise I'll get them on like Amazon, uh, whichever profits you the most, I guess. But, um, David, I've already told you to, you know, hand me names of police officers because I'm going to ask people if you feel, you know, inclined, I want people to donate a book, um, so we can give them out, whether it's at at David's police station or Adams or whoever's and, and just, just say here, you know, somebody, somebody wanted to support police and they want us to give these to somebody who might could use them. I can't wait to get, yeah, I can't wait to get some and take them to my buddies in, in Farmer's Branch. They, uh, I've got a, a lady, she's a, a chaplain up in Northern California, and she's been ordering them. Uh, I don't know how many, I don't know how many of the books she's ordered. She pre-ordered back in October. <laughs> in October, the book hit, you know, I mean, it was, it was climbing quickly on Amazon. And, uh, and that was seven months out from launch. This book doesn't officially launch until May 1st. And it was yeah. in the top 10 in law enforcement books on Amazon. 
uh, over the weekend. And so, it, you know, there's people that go on there. You can go on there right now, and I believe they'll have it to you uh, tomorrow. If you order it today, they'll have it shipped to you tomorrow if you order within the next 36 minutes. Um, but they'll ship them to you. Uh, yeah. They're on sale. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I believe in the power. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not booked much for, um, for, for, you know, signing books, but I'll come out and talk to you, uh, wherever you're at. I've been to Austin a couple of times and, uh, probably be back later this year out that way. I'll be in Louisiana in May and, uh, Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama end of this month speaking. And, uh, I, I'm passionate about it. So if y'all know somebody that can use these books or, or use a message of hope, and uh, I'd love to come and share. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Now, where can they get more information? You have a website, right? Yes, it's theadamdavis.com. Did your, does yeah, your I wife have to call you that, or is that just that, that's just the website, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's just the website. The Adam Davis. And uh, on Facebook, I'm, uh, you can find me, the official Adam Davis. Facebook.com forward slash the official Adam Davis and um, look me up and I'd love to connect with y'all. Awesome. All right. Thank you, David, as well. Uh, David Laser, uh, retired from Farmers Branch, Texas Police Department, and incredible friend. Yes, you know, uh, uh, scary, you know, I. It's funny, I don't even remember the guy that he was with that I wanted to meet that he introduced me to, and I don't even remember his name. <laughs> Todd, yeah, his name was Todd. There you go, Todd okay. A couple times. And all I remember <laughs> is like going around the corner and them seeing each other, me going, okay, I kept telling both of them, just if you don't like the first look, let me tell you, like, what's underneath you guys? I told both of them, you know, David's awesome. I told him Cindy's awesome, and then I just thought, oh well, let's just see what happens. I quit matchmaking because I thought I ca I can't do any better. They have three beautiful kids. The second one, second one's getting married. Two out of three are married. One of them's fourteen. We can't get there wow. yet, but um, <laughs> but I, I'm just so thankful for you, David, for all all of your service, you and Adam for your years of service, and Adam for your ministry because I. I know just by hearing David, it's something that police officers will um, receive, and um, it's something that we can definitely take to churches and get them involved. Yeah. And um, I think that's just a, a very small beginning of something very big. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I cannot do this on my own. It's not about me. And and if uh, if we get anything out of this time together, I hope that <clears throat> I hope that we can we can find ways to collaborate and, and get the message out and and uh, do something great for law enforcement.